How did you love? Here's a, here's a math formula right here for you, if you like math. Here's how it goes. Life minus love equals nothing. It's pretty strong. Life minus love equals nothing. In other words, if it's just life, that's it. With no love, you're accomplishing absolutely nothing. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 7. Love knows no limits to its endurance, no ends to its trust, no fading of its hope. It can outlast anything. Love never fails. All right, so let's wrap this up and let's put this thing into practice. Let's make it real practical. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4, and I'm going to read verse 4 through 7. This is what it said. It says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Now when you look at that, you got to think about love and you got to say, you know what? Love is an action. It's not just something we talk about, it is something that I do. There are so many action steps to that. It's something that I can actually, practically walk out and do. So number one, love is an action, and number two, love is a choice. It is something that you have just got to choose and say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take those steps to make it happen. Now, we've all heard this, is people will say something like, man, I fell in love with him or her. Okay, that is the most erroneous statement that there is. You cannot fall into love. Because it implies that you were just walking along all of a sudden, and you weren't liking where you're going, and all of a sudden you just fell into this love pit, okay? And it's like, oh, I fell into it. Oh, my goodness, you know? And then you, like, the, the definition of the kid, it's just the little stars, you know? That is not love. Now, that is a feeling that is real, and that is something that, that, that can happen, those feelings, but that is not love. Love is a choice. It's something that you choose to do. In fact, a greater expression of love is when you don't feel anything at all, but yet you say, I choose to love, even when I don't feel like doing it. And you, you, you all know that there are times, if you have any friends, if you have any family, or anyone that you're close to, unless you're just off on a desert island by yourself somewhere, and then you might have to deal with the, with the, with the monkeys or the ant critters or something. But if you're on the planet and you're around people, you're going to have to make choices to love or else you're going to have a lot of problems. You're going to have problems because we bump into each other. We rub into each other. And there are times when you have to say, man, I don't feel it with my family right now. In fact, I wish I could just run away from them. But I'm going to choose to love because that is what I want to do. And you just have to make that choice and go for it. Love is an action. Love is a choice. You know, one of the things in closing that I notice about Christ is this. And I was uh, having coffee the other day with Scott and Carter, and we were talking about this, and, and he, he made a statement to me that I thought was really cool. And this, is, this could almost be a, maybe a good slogan for our church, but um, Jesus, if you look at the way that he was, okay, he was love. He personified love. Um, it oozed out of him. And Jesus was a, was a magnet to sinners. They flocked to this guy. He's like, I'll go into any house where I'm welcome. And so he went to the tax collector's home, which those guys, nobody liked those guys. Okay? He went to, to where prostitutes were at. He spoke to them. They were the sinners. They were the people that were excluded. I mean, he was a magnet. They flocked to him. Why was that? Why did they want to be ready? It's because they saw love in him. They saw that it was real. It was an action. It wasn't words. It was something that they could get their hands around and grab it. And they had never, many of them had never experienced that before in their life. And because of that, when the guy walked around, he couldn't get away from the crowd because he had love. And I'm just thinking, man, if we could get a hold of that, as individuals, 
And if we could get a hold of that as a, as a church, and we just said, man, God, make us, make us a sinner magnet. Make it to where people that nobody else want to love and the people that are, that are, that are just out there and don't want to, have not experienced, if we could just be the kind of people and be the kind of place that could really show them love, not look at their situation, not look at what they look like or smell like or, or are and say, man, I'm going to be loved to you. Man, that would be an incredible thing. It would be amazing. And my prayer is that, man, God would just make our hearts, whether it be with anybody that you come in contact with, whether it be your husband or your wife or your children or your parents or the people that you're around, that, man, you would walk in love. And that is what we are all about. You know, we say that, that uh, uh, our goal is to make, uh, make people complete and devote followers of Christ. I would say that no other character characterization describes a follower of Christ than someone who walks in that depth of love. And what I want us to do is I want us to say, God, we want to commit to do that. Could you guys just close your, close your eyes and bow your heads? And I'm going to have Brad um, just lead us in, in a, a closing song. In fact, if you...